Shalom, welcome to The Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabad House of Delmar, together with my co-host Mark Ronich of Statewide News Service and jbiztechvalley.com. Well, Rabbi, we always love to have elected officials in here, and the assembly is starting, state assembly is going to start a new session, and we have Assemblyman Steve McLaughlin here, and from Rensselaer County, and also one town in Washington, and uh, some in Columbia County. So welcome to the Jewish View again. And Thank you. Frequent See, first guests, of so. all, we have to give you a mazel tov, if I can say <laughs> some, right. uh, a little Hebrew, or John, the Jewish View. Congratulations. How, how many terms has it been now? Just finishing my second term, so going into the, the third. third. Yeah. Yeah. Finishing up four third. years, yeah. I was a lot less gray four years ago. <laughs> yeah, right there. we all were. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. right, well, happy Hanukkah. Well, thank, thank you yeah. very much. Everything is good. Great. And, um, what do you see yeah. happening for the, in, for the coming session? Well, I think it's going to be an interesting uh, session, and what a day to be filming this. Uh, taping. We very, don't film anymore. Uh, we taping. Tape. <laughs> an, an, an eventful day here in, uh, in the state, yes. and a sad day in a lot of ways, Well, I think. we'll get to the issues in a minute, but what do you see happening in the issues coming up in the next legislative session. And then we'll talk about casinos and hydrofracking. But Yeah, I mean, certainly a New York City issue is going to be rent control is coming up again. Yeah. That ties into the tax cap up here in upstate New York. So those two are intricately linked. That'll be a big one. Uh, how do we go about uh, spending appropriately the $5 billion? Surplus. I would call it a, a windfall, not a, not a surplus, okay. but uh, sort of a surplus uh, indicates that you've done something right uh, uh, rather than uh, 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 settling lawsuits, which is what this is. So how do we spend that? And there's various ideas out there. I have some of my own. Uh, education is certainly going to be big with the departure of Commissioner King. Uh, the search begins for a new education commissioner, Common that Core. A, that has to be uh, authorized by... No, it's a joint session of the legislature, and the, there's a recommendation that the state ed department gives to the legislature. They meet in a joint session. We won't get into the politics right. of that, but just technically. And then, we, uh, and then the legislature chooses the le education the commissioner, vote. and the uh, governor has no role in this. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, but it, that'll be interesting. Education's always a hot but an issue sure. here in New York State. Well, you know, um, the education budget is larger than most budgets of the of entire states. Right. I mean, we have huge. I mean, our education budget is larger than the most state budgets. It is, <laughs> and, and, and you heard yesterday uh, the regions are calling for a, an increase of $2 billion. And I don't think that's going to happen, mm -hmm. but certainly they're making their case. Uh, what for, did you think of more. the governor tying legislative pay raises in with uh, reform, uh, you know, with... Uh, campaign finance reform? Well, I think that it's a great way for the governor to avoid the issue of a pay raise for, for state legislators uh, and say, well, if they do this, I'll give them a pay raise, uh, which he knows full well that the, the uh, GOP is never going to go along with public financing of campaigns because we philosophically don't believe that we should spend taxpayer money paying for my campaign. Uh, so we have a very uh, strong philosophical disagreement with it. It's also ironic that the man that raised $47 million to run for office then turns around and talks about, well, we need to do campaign finance reform. It's just a little bit hypocritical. Well, he says that if he doesn't play in, within the rules that currently exist, then it's like, you know, giving up and with both hands tied behind his back. I mean, so. Yeah, only you're the leader of the state and you could in fact lead by example should you have chosen to do so, but that's water under the bridge at this point. <laughs> uh, but he knows full well that there's no way. It's a non-starter. We're never going to agree to that. I don't want taxpayer money being spent on my campaign. Do you want a pay raise? You know, anybody would like a pay raise. No, are you happy with the money that you're earning now? I am. I, okay. I make less money than I did flying airplanes a decade ago. And, but bank, I knew, and in banking. And in banking. Yeah. So I took a pay cut to do the job, but I knew full well what I was getting into. All of us know what the job pays. Uh, right. and, if you, and I work an outside job to make up for some of the loss of income. So that's what I do. Um, so, yes, I'm satisfied with it. I would vote no on a pay raise. Uh, okay. I understand some of the folks down in the city. It's not a lot of right. money to live on, 79.5, but that's them. That's not me. For right. this legislator, this assemblyman would vote no, as right. I think most of the upstate delegation would, whether Republican or Democrat, I think they would vote no. Well, unless Shelley twists some arms and the Speaker of the Assembly twists some arms and gets their up, upstate Democrats like Joe Morelli and others to. That may happen. <laughs> that may yet happen. We don't know. However, it's interesting, though, you know, you throw out something that you know one house is never going to agree to or one right. side of the aisle will never agree to. 
And then you say, well, we need to do ethics reform. What I kind think of compromise is that? You know? It's yeah. not at yeah. all. And I think it also, it's, what's getting lost in the shuffle here is that we've done ethics reform twice right. already right. since this governor's taken office. So apparently it's not taking or it's not being done correctly because we still have big ethical problems here in, in New York State uh, in, inside our government. So I don't think that there's any uh, magic bullet solution to this problem. Um, I've suggested tongue-in-cheek say, well, fine, give us a $1,000 a year raise for every year that somebody doesn't get indicted. But, <laughs> you know, for every time someone does, we have to give back $2,000. And within about 20 years, we'll be working for free the way it's been going. But that's just my own uh, tongue-in-cheek way to go about it. Well, thanks for sharing that. Absolutely. I hadn't heard that. Maybe, maybe it'll get legs. Who knows, right? You know, on, a, on another note, though, you are a rising star, if I might say so. Oh, thank you. A, uh, amongst the, surely the Republican uh, assembly, do you see have a future? I mean, people I have heard talking to that you should be the assembly minority leader. I mean, because you are a good spokesman, to say the least. You can see even from the few minutes we had together, if anybody's, you know, noticing that you are dynamic, I, if I say so myself, Thank and you. you have a lot of issues. You're not a wibbly wobbly kind of guy. Right. No, I think you'd make a good, uh, you know. I mean, it's a system. You need a two-party system, and you, you know, you're a good spokesman for. Well, thank you. You know, the other side, so to speak. So we can let's let the debate go on. You know, yeah, instead of one-party system. I agree completely. Who knows what the future holds for me? Certainly, I think all of us have goals and dreams in life, as we should. Uh, we'll see what happens in the future. I know this. I know that I do have a voice that a lot of people seem to agree with and a lot of people don't agree with, and that's perfectly okay. Uh, I think it, our job as the minority party is to be the opposition sometimes. That doesn't mean that we're always in opposition of everything. I think people tend to think, oh, you know, you're, you're, you're always voting no. That's not the case. I'm bipartisan probably 85% of the time. Uh, if not more, but there are certain issues that we're going to we're going to draw a line in the sand on, and we're going to be very vocal. And I think that's our role. As is that is the role now of the Senate Democrats. They're in the minority. I fully expect that they're going to be very vocal on some issues, and that is their job. But now, they're a lot closer to the majority than you are. They are closer. <laughs> uh, you know, I contend you have that how that many mem Republican members in the Assembly? Forty something, right? Forty, some, low forties, like, like 42, 42, maybe yeah. forty three. I will say I don't think we performed particularly well across the state. Given what is clearly a Republican wave year, I think we should have picked up some more seats than we did. The year that I got elected, uh, in, in I came in in 2011, so I got elected in 2010, you know, we picked up 10 seats or so that year. We were up around 51. Uh, and then we gave it back two years later uh, because, in my opinion, we too many of us voted yes on a redistricting plan that hammered a lot of our own members. Mm -hmm. I don't think that was the right move to make. So uh, the, we certainly have a long way to go, and I think the way you advance your cause and the way you begin to pick up members is by standing up for what you believe in and changing hearts and minds of the voters. That's the only way to do it, really. So let me ask you about uh, uh, an issue of the day. Uh, there are two issues. I'll t pick on one first, casinos. Mm. Uh, you represent the city of Rensselaer and East Greenbush. Not Rensselaer, but East Greenbush. Oh, the, not Rensselaer. Rensselaer is one of the few areas in Rensselaer County but, that I don't represent. John if, McDonald does. But if there was... A casino there would certainly the impact, the economic impact would certainly flow over to your district. Absolutely, because you abut right against it. Absolutely. So yeah. I just wanted to know what your thoughts were about rents, about the two Rensselaer County sites uh, losing out mm -hmm. and Schenectady getting the casino. Well, I'm not thrilled for a number of different reasons. I'm not thrilled. I'm not a big fan of casino gambling to begin with. That being said. I'm very much sort of a libertarian on it. If people want to gamble, it's their money, it's legal, they can gamble. I don't think that in any way it represents economic development or represents a good course of action for the state. I also think that if you look at the trajectory of casinos across the nation, they are trending downward, not upward. Donald Trump just closed his casino in Atlantic that City. That wasn't his. He sold it. He just sold the name, the naming rights. Well, it's just his name on it, there. It, but he he got out of that casino business a long time ago. So he's up, but no, nevertheless, yeah. the casino closed. Yeah. The Ravel. Let's make it clear. That's, that's fine. Okay. The the Ravel, uh, yeah. you know, cause closed. Right. So it's not an upward business at this point. I think that you're going to be rapidly overbuilt, and you'll see declining revenues. All of that being said, uh, I was very sort of quiet on the casino issue as it was kind of broiling around here for the past year or so uh, because the people spoke and they voted yes 
uh, throughout the state. Right. They voted yes. The language on the bill was not correct, but that's a whole but different on the whole referendum, different topic. they voted yes. So. They voted yes, so the people spoke. We knew the casinos were coming. At that point, you have to say, well, if they're going to be built, then I have to say, as a, as a member of um, representing that area, though well, I would prefer the money be in my district than not in my district. Um, that's just my opinion. I think if you followed the letter of the legislation, that casino really should have gone to house caverns because it is the most economically depressed area in the capital region that was competing for a casino. And that's where it really probably should have gone. Didn't happen, it's gonna end up in Schenectady, so we'll see. Uh, that being said, the Southern Tier today is exceptionally disappointed yes. because they sort of got- uh, Hammered twice. Twice, twice yeah. in one day, the Southern Tier got it by not getting a fracking decision that was positive from their perspective. And, uh, and not getting a casino. Right, because the casino went up to the fing northern Finger Lakes in Seneca County. Right. So they chose Seneca, Sullivan, and Schenectady, only the S Only the counties. S's. Yeah. <laughs> Interestingly, a dollar sign That's has an S on oh, it, too, good. doesn't it? <laughs> That'll be my headline. That's good. Thank you. There you go. But I, you know, but I, I wanted to, I, I wanted, uh, can we move on to hydrofracking? I just wanted to want say, to? I, well, the hydrofracking, and that's why I guess I'm in the middle of both things. Okay. You know, I just maybe put my opinion. You know, I want to see New York thrive, and Judaism is a business, you know, Jewish businessmen, so... I mean, that saying said, but it's interesting to me that you have an up and down, you know, that we say casinos, gambling, yes, and fracking, a normal business going, you know, no. down. To me, it should be the other way. You know, let regular businesses thrive in New York State, whether I'm not an economic professor, but, you know, lowering taxes, whatever. Yeah. If I know you're on that same page, it let, let there be more businesses, more jobs, and let regular businesses instead of you know, taking people's money away for through casinos. I agree completely. And as a matter of fact, if we had a thriving economy, people have more disposable income in their pockets, they may be more inclined to go to a casino. And I think part of the reason you're seeing casinos decline is because of the lack of that disposable income that people have. So I agree with you. All right, so right. fracking. I mean, do you agree with the science that came out today? Do you agree with what was presented? I mean, or did you not, is it too soon you didn't really get your teeth into this yet? Well, no, I've had my teeth into okay. this for quite some time. No, but the report just The report I have not read. I don't think, as far as I know, I saw the letter, but I don't think the report itself has been made public, but I am anxious to read it. Uh, I will say on the surface, I disagree with it because on the surface, that's good. Yeah, considering well, hydrofracking goes down. It, well, right. it does, but here's what else happens in New York. There are thousands upon thousands of fracked wells in the state of New York, and have been right. for decade after decade. But those are shallow. They're shallow, but still, yeah. I mean, we're, the technology has come a long way. Yeah, but it's not the vertical, and it's not the lower where you, sh you know, using the water and the sand. I think that's what their problem was. And in the when they had the news conference today, the health commissioner said. Uh, that it, of course, yeah. of course. It's our reporter so, yeah. on the scene. Right there you they, go. You know, but they, they talked about the problems with the uh, air, soil, and water quality. Yeah. Yeah. And those are the three. And then heart disease and the birth rate. Yeah, I disagree. So, I disagree with their, their findings. Uh, and the reason I disagree with it is because we have the Obama administra administration. We have 39 states or so doing 35. this. 35. We have um, England is now fracking. <laughs> Uh, the Middle East is trying to frack. Yeah, we broke away from England a long time ago. But the, the, the reality is this. If you look at greenhouse gas emissions, uh, your air is cleaner when yes. you're using less coal, you're burning less oil. Uh, it, it actually cleans up the air. The inner city kids in New York City that are not breathing that dirty fuel oil emissions yes. anymore. So there's a lot of uh, factors that go into this, including national security interests. You see the price of oil yes. dropping. Largely that has to do with fracking. We have more gas and oil under our feet than Saudi Arabia does, so right. there's a real national security issue. I'm of the belief that this is America, and we can get gas out of the ground safely. Uh, doesn't mean that you just throw the door open and let everybody do what they want. You have the proper regulations in place. You, and as I've said many times, proceed with caution, mm -hmm. but proceed. And you look at the southern tier, and it is virtually destitute down there, and this was a way to revitalize that. And go across the border into Pennsylvania. People are not dying in the streets. The economy is thriving. They have learned from some mistakes that have been made. So I think we could have uh, done yeah. this in a measured way. There was an interesting uh, uh, slide that they showed today where they had the whole entire region 
uh, of where the shale is, the Marcellus shale. Mm. And then they said, well, take out this part, take out, you know, for the uh, water, the, the uh, New York City watershed and the Syracuse watershed, and then you take out, because there was uh, towns and villages that said, that passed legislation that said no fracking here. Mm -hmm. And then you take out, the, they said that less than 37% of the shale region would be available. Mm -hmm. And then after the, after the areas that didn't make a decision, had the zoning fights would result in significantly less than 37% being available. Mm -hmm. So I'm just you know putting in things in perspective how they justified this. They said our what we would get out of this would be minimal. I completely be, disagree with that. I, I mean, I couldn't disagree with that more because that 37% may represent close to a trillion feet of cubic, uh, trillion cubic feet of gas. And, and there's some speculation that there's oil underneath the gas. So that 30% may be worth billions upon billions of dollars. So, uh, and what would, they, what would their argument then be? Well, if we're not going to frack absolutely 100% of the available land, we don't want to touch it? That doesn't make any sense to me it's, at all. They said it would be significantly less economic development than originally thought. Well, part, really, of that, yeah, so. part of that problem is much like the casinos, we're about 20 years too late to the game. Right, right, right. Uh, and you look at the price of oil plummeting downward right now throughout the world, uh, so yeah, it is less lucrative right now, but it's, that's not always going to be the case. Like everything else, oil will eventually come back up. Uh, and you know, just look no further than, you know, Andrew Cuomo has never gone to Pennsylvania to visit a gas field. He hasn't done the research himself. He said that this would all be based on the science. It isn't. A doctoral thesis take less time than it took to get this health study done. And I'm not sure what's gone on for the past two years. I'm very interested to see the timeline of what was going on at the, at the health department and really what was going on. Was it sitting in a drawer for the past two years just waiting for Andrew Cuomo to make the decision? The, the reality is this was done based on politics, not the science, because the science is clear. And the Obama administration will tell you that. Obama's EPA will tell you that, that the science is clear, that we can get, I, I find it hard to believe that the United States of America cannot get gas out of the ground in a safe, environmentally friendly manner. It can be done. Okay. And, you know, I'm, I thank goodness for North Dakota because they have 100% employment. Right. You know, you can, if you want a job now, you go to North Dakota, you got a job. Yeah, for, and, as I understand it, they're paying about 22 bucks an hour at McDonald's because that's what they have to pay to get right. people to work there. Because, exactly. Because, you know, guys are driving truck making $150,000 hauling mm -hmm. sand and water out there. Right. Uh, it's, it's an economic uh, boom town. And as I said earlier, you don't just throw the door open and let them go. You, you have the pro and, and the gas industry has asked for those regulations, sure. by the way. They've said, give us the regulations, tell us what the rules are, and we'll play yeah. by those rules. But to just slam the door on it, I think, is short-sighted and actually a death blow to the Southern Tier. It's interesting. The health commissioner said that at the end of the day, when he had to make a decision, he said, "Would I, if, if my child, if it was safe for someone else's family, would I want my family to live there? And would I want my children to play in the soil, to eat the crops that come up from the soil, yeah. to drink the water, yeah. and to breathe the air? And he says, no, I wouldn't. Yeah, he's and at the end of the day, that's what made his decision to say no. And in Pennsylvania, there's a high school that has a gas well right on the school property, and the kids are fine. And you know, the wells themselves take up very, very little room. So it's not like you've got acre upon acre of gas wells out there. The, the well, well pad's probably about as big as the studio we're sitting in right yeah, now. Yeah, but it's, it's not, not like you're going to have a big, uh, a big rig of, with an oil, like you have with the oil fields uh, in someone's backyard. It's, it's definitely a lot different than that. It's a lot different. It's mm -hmm. a lot smaller. Mm -hmm. uh, you can contain a lot of the emissions. And they are, it is a lot cleaner. Natural gas is a heck of a lot cleaner than coal sure and, and diesel and everything else. So. Uh, if you look at the greenhouse gas emissions of this nation, they've plummeted, and that's directly related to fracking. Well, you know, I used to when it, it used to take sixty dollars to fill up my car. I filled up my car yesterday; it's forty-five dollars. It's a thing of beauty. And isn't it still it? hurts. It still hurts, but it not as much. It still hurts. But I want to know, uh, and, and someone must have done an analysis on this. When it was six, when prices were going up, mm -hmm. and it was sixty dollars a barrel. What was the price per gallon of gas then? Right. And now that it's coming down, it's sixty dollars a barrel. What's the price of gas now? And and you know, it's everyone says you know gas prices go up like a balloon and come down like a feather. 
Okay. That's true. I think from my just paying at the pump like everyone else, that sure seems to be the case. So I don't think that sixty dollars a barrel when it was rising, the I don't think the prices are at the same level when it's coming down. No, they may not so, be. That, that's true. They and it's may still not the be. same sixty dollars per barrel. So that is why true. is this not? But they're yeah. looking at supply and projection and everything. There's a whole lot of other stuff metrics, that goes on. A lot there. of metrics that go but on. But there is no greater direct tax cut that you can give to the people of this right. country, especially those of us upstate that are driving all over the place, than if, if, if I'm only spending or you're only spending $40 to fill that tank instead of 60 you just freed up $20 that's probably going to go back into the economy somewhere else. Maybe you're buying lunch or dinner or, or Hanukkah something. gifts. Hanukkah <laughs> gifts, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So now you're on the hook for That's, more expensive right. Hanukkah you're gifts. You're right. <laughs> I'm getting my America over here. All right. You got me. <laughs> I'm your gift. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's just like the other industries. Well, you know the plane industry more than we do, of course, say the least. I, pl I fly in, but I, I fly in them yeah. and you fly them. <laughs> right. But, I mean, just like there must be a boon to the airplane. You know, the, like you say, the tr you truckers, but the truck companies, I mean, all yeah, of a sudden, the they're... airline prices are not going down. No, and I saw that the other day. They're, they like should money. be. They, they'll, yeah. they'll make more profit right now. They should hopefully see some downward pressure on their, on their price per seat. I hope that's the case. But it affects everything we buy. The clothes we're wearing, the food we're buying, everything is trucked or flown or shipped in some way to market. Uh, so it should, you should see lower prices at the grocery store, along with the gas pump, along with the clothing store. So low energy is what fuels this economy. We mm -hmm. have to have low priced or reasonable priced energy. And I think if you see gas, two dollars, two twenty-five a gallon, this economy will take off like a rocket. I think what holds it back is when we're paying four dollars a gallon for gas because it's very painful. Yeah. To, to, and it's it multiply that throughout the entire economy. Somebody said to me the other day, just last night actually, uh, I was at an event and someone said they had read that a one penny per gallon decrease in the price of gas pumps $1 billion into the economy. Really? That much? Yeah, that yeah. much. Amazing. And it's amazing. I remember when it was at close to $4 a gallon, the pizza delivery guys were charging an extra fee for them to deliver the pizza. Yeah. Well, and it wasn't was just them. It was the uh, all the takeout, all the delivery places. Yeah. You know. and, and you see that uh, friends of mine that own sand and gravel companies, they're throwing a fuel surcharge on when the fuel costs them extra money. So that reverberates through the price of every construction project. Uh, for the folks that are buying that material. So it's a real problem to have high-priced energy in, in our economy. It, it hampers us badly. That's where fracking has played an enormous role. So what now, So um, with the Southern Tier, you said that they got hammered by both casino, not having a casino and not having any fracking. Mm. It just seems like, and I, and I saw the uh, headline that said, uh, Cuomo to Broome County dropped dead. But it was more than Broome County. It was Tioga. It was the whole southern tier. Right? The whole southern tier. Uh, that area, I, I've certainly flown in there years ago. I've been in there many, many times. My son plays hockey. We're down there every now and then playing hockey. I've seen it. The folks that are there live it every single day. There is not much going on. And this was like a gift from God under their feet. And we're not going to tap into that. And I find it sad. Um, and then the double whammy of not getting a casino. I think the casinos are a short-term infusion of cash for any community, but I think any community would say, we'll take it, even if it's for a few years. Do you think it, that, you know, Broome County and Seneca County really have nothing <laughs> to do with each other, but do you think that it'll help in the economy, at least in Finger Lakes, uh, coming down to... Watkins Glen or whatever? I think in a minor way yeah. it will, just like I think that the Schenectady Casino in a minor way will have an impact on Rensselaer County, but certainly not nearly as big as yeah. having a casino in Rensselaer County. But certainly there may be some workers going over there to build it and then to work there, things like that. You but not an ongoing, lasting nothing, economic impact? No. no, I don't think it's any dramatic impact so at all. So what more could it be? What, what else could be done? Well, that you? was the question asked today. If not, yeah. if not fracking, then now what, Governor? Not What's your plan? Not casinos, not fracking, now what? Yeah. Yeah, and the governor said, well, you know, it's our, it's our duty to find something. To, well, what? I mean, you had the ultimate gift. You had the ultimate natural resource right there, okay. uh, and you're choosing not to use that resource. I think that those folks are going to be pretty angry down there. A lot of them. Some are thrilled. You know, there are many anti-fracking activists that are absolutely th over the moon that he's uh, denied fracking. You have a cynical way about you. and, and uh, I think like I'm said, the ultimate optimist. Yeah. Well, I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> do you think this was 
politically motivated that the southern tier, I don't think the governor picked up the counties in the southern tier, and he picked up Seneca County, but I'm just wondering, do you think that there was uh, the metrics and got involved in that, or do you really believe that maybe he didn't even have to say anything, that the health commissioner and the DEC commissioner sort of knew that this is what the governor's thinking would be, and there was... Uh, Regarding fracking, yeah. I, you know, I think that this was ultimately a political decision uh, because I don't think the science bears out what they're saying. So uh, I, I think it had to be in large measure a political decision. But even uh, the casinos, what they chose Seneca County up there, but they didn't choose any of the counties that didn't vote for the governor, you know. Yeah, I, you, you would hope not because hope springs eternal. But knowing as much as we mm -hmm. all know about the way Albany operates, there's very, very little that politics does not enter into mm -hmm. in, inside, mm -hmm. the, inside the halls. It's all politics mm -hmm. uh, in, in the capital area and building. So I think politics weighed heavily. Whether it was retribution for an election, I really hope that's not the case. Yeah. Uh, but that wouldn't shock me either if, it, if there was some of that that went on. But how do you ever prove anything like that? No, you can't. You know, it's just by inference. Yeah, it's just by inference. It wouldn't, nothing would shock me, let's put it that way. And I know politics weighed heavily uh, regardless of what's being said. What other issues are you focused on? Well, certainly you focus heavily, day in and day out, you focus on constituent service. And that's, a, that's an individual right. problem as they arise. And that problem could be anything. For that person that's calling my office, that problem means everything to them. So you dig into each individual problem and try to solve it as best you can. So we always have the focus on constituent service. Then you have the larger uh, issues. Uh, one of the things I will be focusing on and talking about over the next few days really is my plan for what I think we should do with that five billion dollars uh -huh. and I think it's What's largely well I think a lot of it should go toward infrastructure maybe not every single penny of it but overwhelmingly it should go to rebuilding our roads and bridges they are crumbling around us there's no doubt about it we need to do that uh, but I think that we need to take a positive step forward with a lot of that money uh, and I'll have a, a bill coming out shortly to this effect where I think we need to start to invest in the education of the next generation of the folks that are going to build our infrastructure. Uh, the hard hat guys, the blue collar guys. Uh, we, it can't all be STEM, can't all be science, technology, and engineering and math because not every kid is designed or, or, or is going to thrive yeah, in right. that environment. Yeah, right. There's a lot of kids I know that, you know, listen, you put a book in their hand, they're not thrilled. Put them on a backhoe, put a hammer in their hand, they intrinsically know what to do. And that they're fulfilled. There's really good money in these jobs. Right. One of the highest paying jobs out there is plumber. Uh, they make a lot more money than I do. Electrician also. Electrician, mm -hmm. plumber. So I think what we need to do is start to honor the trades. And I think that some of that billion dollars should go toward that, toward trying to train the next generation of blue collar workers who are going to rebuild the infrastructure and build the buildings that all those STEM folks are going to be working but in. But aren't the unions doing this training on their own? They, they, some, yes, but not nearly enough. We have a real deficit of skilled construction labor out there, and the unions do a good job, as does the private sector, as far as apprenticeships, but I think we can do a whole lot more than that to try to really, you know, you could reach out to some inner city kids and say, listen, you know, this is your way out. Why don't you, you know, come to work here? It's a good day's work. I've done physical labor when I was in college, working my way up. I've done painting. I've done working underground, you know, putting the underground stuff at gas stations. I've done that. Wow. At the end of the day, you're exhausted. But you know what? You put in a really good day's work. Mm -hmm. uh, and and I, what I'm saying in a nutshell is college is a great path for a lot of people, but it's not the right path for every single member of our society. And a lot of these kids can make six-figure incomes by going into the trades. And I think we need to start to honor that. So that's m the idea. That's the genesis of the idea. Of I don't know. My, my mother always told me to go into the trades and because uh, I was not a science or math guy. And here I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on TV. Yeah. So anyhow. Your mom was right, right? Okay. <laughs> There's a lot of money to be made in the trades. Well, I, I agree with you. And I'm didn't do it. I, didn't do, I wasn't a plumber or an electrician. My mom told, told me to practice piano, and I didn't do that right. either. So. Okay. <laughs> Senator McLaughlin did listen, Dad. You're doing a great job. Thank Again, you. Mazel Tov for your reelection, and you. uh, look, you're a good voice for the people of New York State. And we wish you to continue success, and hopefully, you have even more.
more success in the future and do everything with good health. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be with you as always, and happy Hanukkah yeah, to everybody. Best out of there. success to you. Thank you.